Hello YouTube, welcome to tutorial by Sterling Shift Design. Today we are going to be learning how to create a car paint shader and render a scene that looks like the one that you see on your screen now. So jumping over to Blender, I'm using Cycles in the 2.63 official build. I just have a model that I had previously done about a year and a half, two years ago, and we're going to add materials and render it. Um, so to get started, we are just going to add a couple basic things, such as a ground plane and an emission plane. So we're just going to add the very basic ground plane. Uh, bring it down, make sure that it just barely touches the bottom of each wheel and then just go and scale it up dramatically and for this one we are for this object we are going to add a new material call it round and make it just a very dark diffuse color like dark medium gray should do and a hint is to make it uh, into a viewport color you hover over this control C regardless of whether you're on a Mac or a PC it's still control C and that copies that color hover over the viewport color and press control V and that makes it the viewport color the same as the render color and so we're also going to add an emission point which that I add a new plane, bring it to the middle of my vehicle, and scale it with uh, on the x-axis with ways with y's to about the same width as my vehicle, and then on the y-axis till it's about the same length. You could just a little bit of fudging it here and there, and then when I get it to about the same size as my vehicle, I press scale again and bring it to about one and a half times its original size. I just type in 1.5, go to my side view, and just bring it high above like this. And now it is good to go back into perspective view, but we need to add a material to this emission plane. So we're gonna add a new material, call it lamp, and change it to emission, change the color all the way to white, and the emission strength to about 1.5. And from there, uh, this is a good scene to start out with. One thing that you should change, go to your world settings, and this is all personal preference to be honestly, but I personally to get a black background on my image, remove the background by going where it says surface. And instead of normally it says background, however, I click remove. And I uncheck ambient inclusion as well because both of those things will uh, light up your image too much, honestly, and make it just not very good to. Um, to work with. So let's start with the basic things. We are going to go and see how this looks. Okay, so here's our BVH has finished building and this is what we have come up with. It's just a very basic uh, clay render of it, but it gives you a good idea of what it kind of looks like. It's a neat shape. To start making this look realistic, we're going to start with the very easy part, the crow. Personally, whenever I make materials, I always use a node editor. And to get the node editor up, I'm going to go and make a new section of my window here and change it from our 3D view, which is right here, to 
our node editor. And now I'm going to select a chrome part, like the wheels, and click New Row. And scroll in here, I'm going to delete this diffuse and add two glossy shaders. I'm going to just add one and duplicate it. I'm going to also add a mix shader right here. I'm going to put, I'm going to connect the two glossy shaders to the mix and connect the mix to the material output. I'm going to set the first glossy shader down to zero, make sure it's at white, and keep the second glossy shader, I'm going to bring it down to one, and give it like a gray color. And just to show how this is working, um, just to show how this is working, here you can see one of the wheels have now a chrome on them, but I'm going to make it, I'm going to change the factor to 0.2 so it is more, more glossy and more mirror-like and less of this ambient color. And that just gives us a very nice chrome effect, very easy to replicate. And I'm going to add it to the rest of the chrome pieces such as the chrome accents, the exhaust pipes, the grill, the headlight deflectors, and the um the little logo thing badge that I have on the front of the car and lastly but not leastly the disc brakes now I know you're thinking that brakes actually aren't chrome however I'm too lazy to make another material and chrome works well enough uh, I'm not going to test render this yet because that will take too long and we haven't done enough to uh, deserve a good test render but now we're going to work on the glass and the glass I don't have anything on the interior of my car as you can see here so I'm going to make my glass shader not actually glass but a glossy shader or a combination of glossy shaders okay sorry about that little skip there I had run into a little problem and I had to restart the recording. But anyway, so now we're working on the glass. Which, as I just explained, isn't actually glass, it's just going to be a glossy shape. So I add a new material, I'm going to call it Windows. And I'm going to delete the diffuse and add, similar to the chrome shader, two glossy shaders and a mix shader. Just gonna hook it all up real quick and then we can get going on actually configuring everything. So this glossy shader I'm going to set the roughness to zero and the color to uh, pure white so we get nice crisp re reflections. The bottom shader I'm going to set to a medium gray and I'm going to set the roughness all the way to around 0.5, maybe 0.6. I think I'm going to go with 0.6. And I'm going to set the factor to 0.8 so I get very... actually I'm going to make the bottom glossy shader 0.4. I get very subdued reflections and it's, it looks like a decent, a decent sort of glass shader not too distracting because remember the main focus of our car at least this car isn't the glass or because it has no interior it's the actual body of the car itself so we have this much and it's starting to look pretty good I have we have chrome we have glass we're gonna add tires now 
and the tires um, are very simple to set up it's just new material and hold on there it goes call it tires and keep it on diffuse and set it really dark almost to black and that's just a very very simple way to get a kind of rubber material it doesn't need to be more complex than this because you don't we're not having close-ups on it. it doesn't need to have glossy all we need to do is just make a material that looks kind of matte and so the other one of the last materials that we're going to set up before we get to the actual car paint are the head headlight shaders and so we're going to select the headlight glass it's, there is supposedly an easier way where you do it a mix I can't even try it a mix between a transparent shader and a glossy shader I'm very interested in actually seeing how it works out because I use glass the glass shader all the time but apparently I'm doing it wrong I don't see much of a difference um, and actually for the time being I'm going to hide my glass so I can work on my lamps I'm going to uh, go to my wireframe view so I can see my lamps and give them a new color change it to a mission call it headlights and change my mission color to a blue like a LED blue and because they're going to be behind a glass shader I need to really ramp up the emission power so I'm going to actually set it all the way to 5 and for the back I'm going to make the back lamps call them tail lights change it to emission and the color to red blood red and the strength again to five. I'll unhide my other my the glass that we hid so we could work on the headlights and taillights and see what it looks like in rendered view. And so you can see the front looks pretty good. The transparent glossy shaders are working pretty well. They're giving us a nice color combination and they're not and they're not too noisy. Um we can check out the back too. See how that's working. Because it the main thing, the one drawback about using a transparent shader and a glossy shader is that you can't get the index of refraction. You can't get the refraction that you can get with thick glass, which is alright for something small such as taillights. But if you were ever doing something that you needed a close up of a glass, say for like a wine glass or a champagne glass or something like that you definitely want to use a glass shader so you can get refraction and make it look much more realistic but this is good for the extent that we're using it so now we're going to move on to one of the final to the final aspect actually of our car and that is the car paint itself you will have to see that in the next video which you can see in the description below or by going to my channel page because I'm running out of time in this video I don't want to bore you all to death 